Hi, this is Patch of the Week with Doug Linner. I'm going to start with a new sub-series of Patch of the Week this time. It's going to be a detailed tour through the mystery search, panel by panel. For those of you who don't know, the mystery search, and you're looking at the sequencer programmer panel here right now, it's the first commercial search synthesizer. It's from 1975. It's not the first surge ever made. That belongs to Will Jackson. And it was actually made by Will along with other people who were building the surge synthesizers of the earliest versions at a location at the California Institute of the Arts in Valencia, California. And I was a student there at the time, and that's how I found out about the surge. I didn't feel that I had the personal aptitude to build one myself, but I did order one. And it turned out that I ordered the very first one from the company that was made as a company, as opposed to being made by the owner in the stairwell in CalArts in kit form. So that's what the Mystery Surge is. It's been updated many times over the years. Um, last update a few years ago was conducted by Kevin Brahaney Fortune. Kevin was one of the engineering staff of the Surge company early on and is one of the people who really knows the Surge system. Uh, and he knows it both as a technician and as a musician, and he's really accomplished at both of those things. So I was very lucky to have Kev take the system and really do a once-over on it. And we added a lot of functionality and made a lot of changes, and they were mostly aimed at improving the live performance capabilities of my system. I don't think I'm actually going to use any sound in this particular patch of the week because we're really looking at the layout and functionality of the panel and it has a lot of LEDs which will help us understand what's going on so hopefully that's going to work out. The way that the panel's patched right now is the same as it most commonly would have been patched in the old days back in 1975. First let me give you a general tour. The panel has two sequencers and two programmers. On most other systems, the sequencer and the programmer are one unit, but like so many things on the Surge, functions are broken down into smaller bits here. That allows you a lot of increased functionality, and it also has some cons when it comes to certain things like live performance. We will revisit that issue as we look closer at the panel. So we have two sequencers. This is one and this is the other, and we have two programmers, this is one, and this is the other. We have a couple switch, and that allows us to make this two four-stage uh, programmers, three rows, or one eight-stage programmer with three rows. The sequencers are gate-out sequencers. Originally, they would have been patched as they are here with the output of sequencer gate 1 going to the input gate of step 1 of the programmer, etc., etc., all the way to step 8. Now, of course, they don't have to be ordered in this particular order. It was just the way that the average person would have done it at the time. And uh, it would have resulted in a normal uh, sequencer output, such as uh, boom ba boom ba 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 boom ba you know, that kind of thing. So having two sequencers, you would have the option to have each sequencer programmer combination operate independently of each other with two four-stage sequences. Over here on the sequencers themselves, much of the original functionality has been covered. But there's also a reset. For instance, we could take a pulse out of stage 5 and send it back to the reset, and that would give us a four-stage output from this uh, eight-stage sequencer. It also has a hold input and that would allow uh, whenever a, a, an input went to plus 5 here it would cause the sequencer to stop at whatever stage it was at at that time and then when it went low again 
it would continue on with however it was set with the clock and resets, etc. Originally it had a reset B and it was just like reset A. This is actually the first modification that we'll talk about here and uh, this was done by Kevin in the uh, modification a few years ago and we took and put a button there which allows this to be reset manually. Seemed to be a little bit more useful than a duplication of, of uh, what was already there. The other four things that are left to discuss on the sequencers are all modifications, some successful and some not, at least not yet. The white toggle switches on each sequencer allow you to kill the clock input. The next modification is one that's not working yet, but it will be soon, because a fix to the circuit was just provided recently by Serge himself. And what that is, is that these two red toggles here uh, will allow one to step one by one through the steps of the sequence. The LEDs on the sequencer were also added. They weren't part of the original design. The ones that are over here we'll be getting to in a minute. They've also been added. The last modification to the sequencers is one that we can see a lot better over here on the unpatched sequencer. It's a multi-position switch that you can point from 1 o'clock to 8 o'clock and anywhere in between. So as you can see here, I'm pointing it to one at that uh, one o'clock now, and um, pointing it to two and three and four, etc. What the eight position switch corresponds to are the eight uh, outputs of the sequencer, one through eight. So one o'clock corresponds to one, two o'clock corresponds to two, etc. So what I'm doing when I have the pot pointed to 3 o'clock, for instance, is resetting the sequencer to create a three-stage output. If I move it to 4 o'clock, I'm getting four steps. If I move it to 5 o'clock, I'm getting a five-step output from the sequencer. That's a really amazing performance modification, and it's really a game-changer with the sequencers and what you can do with them. Before I go on to introduce you to some other modifications that have been done to the programmer side, I want to show you a couple of things that were part of the original programmer modules. Number one, right up here at the top you have gate outputs from each of the programmer steps or stages. Then you have outputs of the buttons that are down here and they come from the red jacks. As far as the voltage outputs from the programmer, each half uh, has a voltage output from each row. And that's what these blue outputs are. If you're using this in the coupled setting as it is right now, as an 8 stage, then the voltages would be taken out of this side. If you were using it independently as a second 4 stage, it would also be taken out of here. Okay, there are a few more things to cover, and this one's a big one. Keep your eyes on the LEDs here as I take out these patch cords. You'll notice that the lights are going away, showing that they're no longer triggering the staging, right? Or the stages. Um, but I can regain this very same patch without these patch cords simply by flipping the switch. So what's that switch? Whoops, sorry about that. That switch indicates that the sequencer is backwired and I don't actually need any of these. And that's really a great thing. So these switches, in this position, will select the back wiring of either sequencer 1 or sequencer 2 to either or both of these two programmers. 
And which one's being used of sequencer one or two? It can be selected here. Each of the uh, programmers can be reversed using these switches. They can also be turned off in each half. And so you can get quite a few patterns out of it that way. The final genius modification, something that really takes the programmers and sequencers to new realms, it's what's known as the skipper row function. With the skipper row function, the programmer can not only run across, but it can run down. What that means is that you can turn the single four-step programmer from a four-step to a twelve-step. And in the same way, you can take this eight-step sequencer and turn it into a 40, I mean a 24-stage sequencer. The skipper row function combined with the reset pot and the directionality controls really provide an amazing amount of control over the panel. And these are actually two skipper row functions. It's one for each programmer if they're used independently of each other. But since the functionality of each is the same, I'm just going to use this as an eight stage sequence in order to illustrate how it works. I want you to pay attention to these LEDs. They were added to each of these rows. They weren't part of the original module because the skipper row function wasn't part of the original module. I'm going to take a gate output of step one and I'm going to run it over here to the input of the skipper row. When I do, you'll notice a change in the way these LED works. LEDs work. So here we're going from the output of step one to the input of the skipper row function. And now you'll see that every time the sequence reaches step one, it moves this light to each row in the sequence. So now it is sequencing across and down. When you're using it, in the skipper row context, instead of taking the voltages out from these blue jacks, and you could continue to do so, uh, and, adds, and that adds a little bit more capability to it, in fact, but if you want to get the output that's created by the skipper row function, you take it from these green jacks. These two, if you're using them independently, as two four or 12 stage sequencers in that case, or this one only if you're using it as a single 24 stage sequencer. Now that, I gotta tell you, is a game changer. The remaining features of the skipper row function are a reset jack and a manual reset button. And again, that exists in both of the skipper row functions that are on this panel. All right, well, I don't think I've forgotten anything. That's everything that the sequencer programmer panel of my highly modified original era Serge synthesizer does and has. It's a brilliant original design, and the updates made to it by Kevin Brahaney Fortune took it to a whole other dimension. So I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the sequencer programmer panel on my mystery Serge, and that is another patch of the week. Join me soon for the next panel.